and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Simic Flash. Now, this is a little bit of a different Simic Flash deck. We're playing a little bit of a budget version, just a tiny bit here. Um, as you can see, like normally with Simic Flash, we probably want four Brazen Borrower, but we got one. We probably want, you know, more Once Upon a Times, but we got one. So we got one Once Upon a Time, one Brazen Borrower, a couple Wildborn Preserver, which this is going to be a fun card to play. This is going to be my first time playing Simic Flash with Wildborn Preserver whenever I was playing it uh, earlier. And I guess I was really playing it best of one. But earlier with this format, I didn't have the Wildborn Preservers. So I'm excited to try those out. But anyway, um, so that's why if you're at, if you're like wondering at home, like why are we just playing like one of those cards? That's why we're playing one, one of each of those. Um, the person that plays this deck at FNM, that's what they got. And so that sounds cool for to me so we're gonna see if there's any uh you know like we're gonna play through the list here you know afterwards see if there's any you know kind of budget conscious changes that we can make to it with commons and uncommons but kind of looking at it right now besides that it looks pretty good um i i kind of want to put more ops in but i don't know exactly where i think we want to keep the unsummons i like all these counter spells so you know we'll kind of see how it plays the dream eater is certainly a card that is sweet this one's non-negotiable. We're keeping in Dream Eater. This Nightmare Sphinx is awesome. So we're keeping this bad boy in. Um, but yeah, that's that's our deck. Y'all kind of know about Simic Flash. Let's see how this plays. And we'll see if we need to, you know, update anything afterwards. So here we go. All right, so let's play a league. We're going to see if we can get to five wins before two losses. And let's go. We got 23 lands in here. So that's a little bit of a worry, but we, you know, we got the couple of ops to help us out. You know, for a six mana card with 23 lands is... Um, <clears throat> ambitious Am ambitious it's a hard word to say ambitious <laughs> dream eaters arms and legs makes me jealous hmm. okay there we go how are we supposed to put one of these cards back Are we supposed to put one of these back? I mean, Furled Mystic, Nightpack, Ambusher, that's like, you know, those are the the heart of our deck. Those are like our best cards. So I guess it's honestly this. And, you know, look for double green and look for something to do in the meantime. Obviously, that really hurts putting that card back. Uh, you're not a green source. Cutthroat just trades with Spitter. Hmm. Yay. You think I should just put opt back and just try to rip the green source? Maybe I should just play other island there. Gives my opponents a little le bit of less information. Okay. So I, w I was certainly considering of waiting on cutthroat of... You know, depending on what my opponent did, I was certainly considering just waiting and, you know, playing it like end step on turn three. And so it wouldn't, uh, you know, make, make it bigger than the one drop. But with them playing Cavalcade, I'm just getting their creature off of the battlefield. All right, good quality on summon there. Get him. Opponent has been ambushed. <laughs> I 
No, it's okay, Braxis. I, I, I completely understand not, not liking this deck. I completely understand that. It's not for everybody. Um, hopefully you can kind of appreciate the deck for what it is, though. And not hate it, even if it's not something that you like to play against. It's kind of a perspective I have on life. So I'm very good at not hating things and appreciating everything for what it is. I've never really minded playing against counter magic too much. I actually would rather play against counter magic than than Golos. Like if we're picking like which one would you rather play against? I'd rather play against this. Yeah, my opponent may not be too happy about the Frilled Mystic. So yeah, we, we just have one Once Upon a Time, because this is a slightly budget list. Frilled Mystic is really strong. There's not enough Frilled Mystic being played. Like in other decks. What is this what is this ball that this Frill Mystic has? What is this? What is that made of? What is the substance of that? It's the quench ball. It's the spell that he's catching. Does quench have like that same, that same design on it? Oh, I didn't update our deckless command. I forgot to do that. Let me do that. She is the frill. That is the mystic. Yeah, Quench has that same kind of ball on there. It's the tears of the opponent. It's Gatorade. <laughs> Is Frilled Mystic just like an, an awesome basketball player? Just like palming it over here? About to dunk on you? Is that like someone's getting posterized there? <laughs> Update win column. <laughs> Clearly a, a water polo player. <laughs> Frilled Mystic kind of looks like Giannis. Thanks, Dons. <clears throat> can I feel? Can I ask how you feel about fairies in blue-white control at the moment? Moment, hypnotic sprite and brazen borrower. I played against a blue-white control list with those fairies, and they they both did very well. Um, yeah, like, like, 
yeah, so I, I can definitely see playing those. Yeah, you're playing those kind of instead of like Gadwick. Yeah, they're they're strong cards, so yeah, I like it. Okay, so this is kind of the awkward part about Fabled Passage and Temple. Of course, we want to lead off with Temples. But then if we, like, scry extra lands to the bottom, then our Fable Passage just shuffles those lands back. It's usually better to shuffle your library first before you scry stuff to the bottom. But it's, it's a little awkward. So that, that's tough. If I had one Temple, I would lead off with the Passage. But the fact that we have two Temples, I, like, I don't know if we can really afford to have two Tap Lands later on. <clears throat> I think we have to just kind of get rid of the tap lands immediately because we're going to want to have all of our mana later on. Well, we've drawn really well. Down, 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 down. You're O four against green black with flash. This is why Brazen Borrower is better than Unsummon. It can be an Unsummon that also kills the opponent. <laughs> Simic Flash is killing my gains. <laughs> Golos detected, no mercy. That is true, the unsummon can bounce your own frilled mystics. Or Brazen Borrower can only bounce the opponent's stuff. I suppose I had lethal there. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I should have played the wolf. I was like just clicking through very quickly and then like while like it was doing the damage, I was like kind of counting. I was like, wait a minute. And you know, but it was it was too late cuz you know like the damage was happening cuz I was like, wait a minute, 10, they're at 11. Eh, too late. I clicked clicked too fast. I think we're okay, though. I, I gave my opponent another turn. I'm nice. I let them get, you know, get a creature and play. It's nice. So I'm thinking that we want Mystical Dispute because of Teferi. And Disdainful Stroke is probably awesome. So if we play those five...
What are we cutting? Are we cutting like unsummon and maybe some of these two drops that kind of get blocked by zombies? Yeah, I mean, I guess we probably have to cut the Dream Eater. I feel like Essence Capture could be good. You know, counters Golos. That's kind of cool. Then cut Quench. Quench. One Quench, quench three on summon, a Dream Eater. This is Black Cow by Steely Dan. It's over now. Drink your big black cow and get out of here. Will you ever play on stream any draft? Um, probably not, but I am planning on making draft videos for YouTube in about three or four weeks. I'm gonna have gonna take some time to get um, acclimated acclimated to the the draft format. Give me some time to you know play a whole bunch of drafts and everything. I've I've already started drafting a little bit off stream, and because I I think they can make for good YouTube videos because I think like the draft gameplay is is pretty boring. I think that's that's why draft kind of struggles to get more views. But so what I'm planning to do for the YouTube videos is to simply how the videos be like, you know, like 30, 40 minutes where it's just where we do like the whole drafting process and, you know, talk about like the different picks and everything. And, and, you know, like, and that, and, and then, you know, the deck building, you know, build the deck. And then afterwards it will be, um, and then, you know, so I'll have like that video, then I'll go through, play all the games. And then we'll also have like afterwards, it'll be like the, the wrap up. So talk about like how you know show how many wins did we get how the deck do, um, what what went well what what didn't go well that kind of stuff. But um, you know put those together so it'll be like just the one video of like the drafting the deck building and then how the deck do kind of thing. Um, and so I I got to learn how to like edit the two videos together. I don't think that'll be too difficult of a task. All right, quench while we can. But that's that's my plan for draft videos. But I want to have a lot more experience, so I know a lot. You know, I, I want to have, I want to be pretty knowledgeable about what we're talking about. For that, I'm glad they didn't have Veil of Summer. They kind of made it seem like they were going to play Veil of Summer. Counter spells are just good. I kind of feel like I, I need to make. I kind of want to play Grixis control that's like more counter spell heavy control. It's got to be able to give a counter to this Wildborn Preserver. We need that preserver needs another counter. All right, two and O. Yeah, excerpts. I'm I'm right there with you. 
Exert said that people have really undervalued counterspells since rotation. They they think that Teferi being in some decks uh, makes counter magic unplayable. But with how like the expensive the the cards are that are being played and how much value each card can generate with like these planeswalkers and everything, counter magic is in a really good spot. You know, obviously you have Teferi. That's that's obviously a problem. But especially if you're playing something like Grixis, where you have a lot of removal for Teferi. Yeah, Teferi's not too common. That's true. It's it's not as common as what people think. Um, I think I'm two and zero. Maybe I'm three and zero. Am I three and zero? We beat we beat a red deck and then we beat Golos. Did we beat something else also? I think it's just 2-0 now. I don't know. Anybody want to confirm or deny what our record is? Veil of Summer is a problem. 2-0. I could find the one drop with Once Upon a Time. That we could have like found the one drop, played the one drop. The not the Siren Storm Tamer, whatever it is. Spectral Sailor, that's it. What's this? leave up center to sabotage. At least I'm telling my opponent I have center to sabotage. Yeah. Gross. I was hoping they would believe me that I had center to sabotage and just play something that was expensive and not play around quench again. I'm not I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Escoria. Like uh in in context of like how I was saying how I was planning on doing like the drafting process or like the limited process. Okay, deckless command should be updated now. Hey, 64. Okay, you've had a really hard time versus the Golos list. Um, I'm not... I 
guess we just do this and they if they want to tap their two creatures they take lethal so yeah they can't really tap their creatures Um, I'd have to kind of look look at the deck and every you know I have to have to look at it completely there. Um, oh yeah 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 yeah. So did you watch the end of the video? Okay, I, I remember there. Yeah, sixty four. Did, did you watch the end of the video? Because I remember talking about that at the end of the video of like cards to play to make the the Golos matchup better. Because yeah, that that's what we struggled with. Also, I I didn't really like the Golos matchup there. I know I thought the deck needed like Ashiox. Um, in particular, and we talked about a few other things. I, I don't know if you saw that that at the end of the video. All right, so they're doing Abzan stuff. Hmm. Not sure how good Disdainful Stroke will be against our opponent. Probably pretty good. Probably pretty good. We haven't drawn Dream Eater yet. We'll cut a sailor, I guess. We're gonna cut the quenches because my opponent um, played very well against quench. The other game, like you know, they they played around quench the whole game. So I'm hoping my opponent plays around quench again. And so they, we can just have two mana up, and they you know they play around quench even if we don't have it. Okay. No, okay, I, I know what you're talking about now, Ascoria. Yeah, so I'm I'm planning on on not doing it during during stream. Like, I, I, yeah, okay. So yeah, I know what you're talking about with the the how viewers can help you know can pick the stuff. Like I'm gonna be just making YouTube videos with it with with drafting. I'm I'm still gonna be doing for stream. I'm gonna be doing standard, and we'll just construct it. You know, like. I, I don't know why my opponent played Veil. I, I don't know what happened there. It looks like the... It looks like the upside of playing Simic Flash is that your opponents don't like Simic Flash and they just don't put up much of a fight. That's what this... That's what this League's been kind of... Our opponent's not... Not wanting to put up any fight against Simic Flash. That's some upside. Uh, yeah, this is this is one that could go wrong. But if we draw two lands, we're really good. Sorry, Sabotage, you're pretty great, but I'm on land. You're welcome, yeah. And so, like I said, it's probably like three to four weeks before I'll start making the draft videos. I need some time to feel, you know, get a lot more experience in the format. I'm glad we put the Sabotage down to the bottom, even though it's a good card. Let's 
It's annoying. One mana spell. Trades with Cutthroat. Allows them to du double spell pretty easily. Even if we counter. I don't care about that thing at all. The thing, yeah, like if this is like a regular removal spell, I would let it go. But the thing about countering this is it means the Murderous Rider is out of here for good. I guess the other half of Murderous Rider isn't too threatening. I'm certainly countering this. It's whether I want to go capture or, or frilled mystic. Uh, this is getting countered though. Hey, Madman. Yeah, Fl Flax and Intruder is a little on the weaker side. have three cards in hand kind of hoping they're out of removal Yeah, I didn't. <clears throat> I did not um, activate the Fabled Passage the previous turn because it kind of looked like my opponent was like. It looked like my opponent was like waiting for me to do that and then was going to be able to. Um, would then was planning on playing the the wild, killing the wildborn preserver whenever I I tapped out, and so I didn't crack out immediately. Plus, I really didn't mind drawing a land, like getting a fifth man in there. I actually thought would be would be would have been just fine, and so I didn't I didn't mind that too much. The hard part is. Do I tap out here and leave that vulnerable? The answer is yes. 
you know, vulnerable with the Paradise Druid having black mana. Six mana doesn't let us do a whole lot of stuff. Um, I kind of want this land. We'll probably find more land, though. Have not played Mono Black the Yara Citadel today. You see, like, the record's going down the left-hand side here. Have not... Did not get to that... No, Flax and Intruder is not that good. Um, my opponent playing three colors here, they probably don't need to have Flax and Intruder in their deck. All right, they had double black available. They're not playing lands. Yeah, I can definitely see playing Flax and in Intruder in a in a harder two color deck. You know, like in, in just like a two color deck. You're kind of a little shorter on one drops. I don't I don't really want to trade one wolf token for a murderous rider let them like double block with murderous rider I'm gonna have to just counter that one drop anyway So keeping the land so we get to double activate Spectral Sailor if it comes to that. They definitely Legion's End did the wrong thing. You know, like Spectral Sailor was more valuable than, you know, four wolves. Wolves are not valuable. Spectral Sailor very valuable. So still have the unsummon to protect ambusher if they have removal. I 
<laughs> yeah, they could. Ha yeah, they could have Garrick. Bring in the spice. We're not playing this league and not playing this Dream Eater. I'm casting this Dream Eater. Jeez. Give me dat, and give me dat, and give me dat, and I guess not dat. I don't know. I want to bounce any of these things. You know, make some bears. Sure, go and go make some bears. You want to spend seven mana for some two twos? Go ahead. Be my guest. So patient. Dream Eater connects. Yeah, I could attack with a bunch of wolves, gave him plus one, plus one. Or I could just, you know, not. <laughs> yeah, it could take, it can take a while. The slow drain of the spectral sailor. That card is so good. So it's pretty important keeping those uh, innkeepers off the battlefield. That's that's a card that I'm worried about. Allows them to have. Um, he allows them to to cycle like with all their stuff. Allows them to really you know dig pretty far. I'm worried about innkeepers. Yeah, we just played the, the Dream Eater, that game. Uh, no, it's not really that important, but it's cool. What standard deck would you bring to a big tournament tomorrow? Uh, that Teamer Walkers that we went 7-0 with in the um, metagame challenge. Seems like they get to out... Uh, Seems like they're going to be able to outgo Quench pretty easily. Uh, these two drops aren't as good either against. I cut a couple two drops against their one one Death Touchers. Kind of want to play Ether Gust. Kind of don't want to play Ether Gust. We're just gonna cut cut a couple two drops. Play a couple of Veil Summers. Uh, that for the the link to all the decks is is there. Yeah, thanks, Lou. So that's where you can find all the the decks. Also, if you want to check out the the uh, Teamer Walkers deck on the YouTube channel, check it out over there. YouTube.com. I'm trying to say resolve slash Todd Stevens MTG. That you know that video is up there also. And of course, afterwards, like always, we talk about. Some things that maybe could change about the deck. Um, so yeah, so feel free to watch that also. Hope you all check that video out. And I guess I didn't have the arena sounds on, but this video will have the arena sounds. But unfortunately, I guess the Teamer Walkers and the Abzan Knights didn't have the arena sounds. Unfortunately, so I apologize about that. And of course, there's no music over on YouTube. So you can play your own music over there as well. You can watch at like one and a half or two speed if you like watching the videos faster. I know a lot of people like doing that. 
the gameplay go faster. I listen to like my, my podcast on one and a half speed. So I certainly understand that. Hey Samuel, yeah, it was the metagame challenge, so we won 30 boosters. Basically doing that because it was Murderous Rider and that gets that out of there. <laughs> Thanks Samurai Man. Take your spot back, there you go. You watch at 1.25? Okay, let's see, you still can, you can understand the words. At 1.25, but it gets a little difficult. At 1.5. I'll take a land, thank you. Sale. Mm. Blue man is pretty great. Got to have that double green. Besides that, we want blue. <laughs> I keep trying to fast forward with the arrows on Twitch. <laughs> Where are all the Field of the Dead decks today? Uh, maybe in the metagame challenge. Get him, Spectral Sailor. Man, this card is so good. <laughs> you try, uh, on, when you're watching on YouTube, you try to mouse over the cards like with Deckmaster. The, the BNR announcement is the 21st, nine days. thought about just letting that happen you know, like they lose two life with it they go down to two yeah I, I could also counter and then they have to jump block Kind of annoying at three life a turn whenever I'm dealing three damage a turn. The reason why it's not, yeah, you, 
We don't want to counter a Johnny again there because uh, then they get to draw a card off Veil of Summer. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, like counter that. I don't, like, I should probably just let them have their cool card and then just play the ambusher they know about and just kill them with the ambusher. I should probably just let them have that. Let them do their thing. That was kind of mean to counter that. Should have let them have their cool card. All right, we are four and O. Oh. Y'all know that means we're on the final boss. Try to get this five win league. Final boss time. Mateo getting those final boss emotes. I love it. Here we go. Final boss. Yeah, dubious. I, I, I feel bad for not letting them have their their card. All right, we'll see if we can counter some stuff. That is not a land. We need another land. Like, yes, it's a counter spell that would fit the curve, but it's not a land. When we got Mystic, Mystic, Ambusher, we gotta find fourth land. <laughs> nice, Caesar. What's worse, a Grixis deck that kills everything that you play, or a Simic deck that counters everything you play? I don't know. I don't really mind either one. Myself, it's... I, I don't really see any difference between, you know, counter spell or removal spell. It's same same thing. It's just what, You know, as long as it's like one for one trades. So anyone tried Fires of Invention, Tamiel, Flood of Tears. Opponent, where'd you go? Are we seriously just playing Simic cards and then my, my opponents can't handle it? Yeah, I went 7-0 in the metagame challenge with Teamer Walkers earlier. Boo. <laughs> yeah, we really spent a lot of time, you know, running around like the forest, uh, getting in battle after battle after battle and just leveled up. Um, yeah, like we were just leveling up so much. And then, you know, we went to the final boss. We wanted to make sure we we're, you know, like we're level 99, go to the final boss. And it turns out you only really need to be like level like 35, 40 to beat the final boss. And so it was just way too e easy. Y'all do that in the games? Because you like doing that in, like, you know, Final Fantasies. Gotta get the characters up to level 99. Yeah, we played against Golos twice with Teamer Walkers. 
We played against Golos twice and Mono Red twice and three other decks. A level up emote. Write that down. What about a, a level up pup? So you know I have like a picture of pup and it says level up and so you can so the emote is level up pups. So you can you can have your level up pup emote. Of course my dog's name is Puppy. Or Pup for short. There we go. Level up pup. All right, so yeah, pretty easy 5-0. Um, sometimes in the constructed leagues, you have harder competition than others. Uh, that time we didn't have too difficult of competition. A couple of things about the deck. Unsummon played pretty well. It played better than I thought. I like the ability to unsummon our own creatures, especially Frilled Mystic, of course. <clears throat> but it played pretty well. Uh, I didn't... You know, like, before I was saying, like, I think we probably need four ops in the deck. And honestly, I didn't miss opt, like, at all. As long as we can, like, hit, you know, a couple land drops, which we, you know, we did a pretty good job of. I think if you don't have four lands, you kind of have to, uh, when you're scrying with Temple, you got to scry to the bottom and, and make sure you have four lands and make sure you have double green. I think that's, that's the, like, an important thing with that if, you know, early on in the game. There's a couple of times we could have easily kept... You know, like a random counter spell. You know, like we have three mana. We could have kept a sabotage to have another counter. But I think it's better to make sure that you get to that four four mana and start playing Ambush or Frill Mystic. Um, and then, yeah, some, sometimes you you want to pressure. Sometimes you want to, like, ignore their their stuff and, and just race. Because these cards can race pretty well. Um, and then other times when you're sitting back, you just want to sit back and, and really uh, be patient. As we saw with some of those games. Draw your cards with Spectral Sailor. This card is awesome. Um, so there we go. <laughs> Call it the Simic Salt Mate, the the Simic Salt Mine on YouTube. Yeah, I mean I could do that. Do y'all like that title for the video, Simic Salt Mine? All right. So the question was, can you explain? I'm getting back to the normal playlist. There we go. Kings played the, the one once upon a time. We this was a, a little bit of a budget version from somebody that has like this this version at FNM. You know, like they just have one once upon a time, one brazen borrower, and things like that. So we played a little bit of a budget deck here with this donation deck. No, that would be easy. That would be evil. <laughs> Cheering for Simic Salt Mine. Alright, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, I mean, we had we had some opponents that did not want to play against Simic Flash, so I guess that's that's plus EV. So you know, if you're, you know, if you want a, a plus EV deck, you'll just get free wins from your opponents that don't want to play against Simic Flash. Um, how would I optimize this list? All right, this is what we played earlier um, a couple of weeks ago when we were playing Best of One. Is it here? Do I not have it anymore? I guess maybe I got rid of it. Hmm. Well. Uh, basically, I, 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 uh, if I was optimizing it, I would play four Brazen Borrower. I wouldn't play... I don't know. Wild War Preserver is nice. But, I mean, I, I think the deck should have four Brazen Borrower because I, I really like this card. Um... And so I'd probably take out, like, an Unsummon and two Preserver and play for, like, the other three Borrower. Um, I don't know about Once Upon a Time. It's okay. Like, you know, we had it in our opener twice, and it, it was fine. I don't know, like, how much you actually want to, like, spend mana on Once Upon a Time later on. You know, if we think about those games, like, I don't know about, like, turn three, turn four, turn five, turn six, if I ever want to, like, actually cast Once Upon a Time. I kind of like just having one, honestly, in this deck. I actually kind of like that. You know, like, we have the one. We cast it for free. We don't have to worry about playing it later on. I, I love four Spectral Sailor, of course. This card's just awesome. Um, 
Pratt to ask what four to six cards can I add to the board for green black adventures in this deck? Um, what are we adding for green black adventures? The, the real card is, is like that, the one drop that draws extra cards. That's, that's the, that's like the real difficult card. Um, there's not like good cheap removal in Simic, is there? And there's Ether Gust. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. So that's that's your bad matchup there. I don't know. That one's tough. On YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments how if you're playing Simic Flash, how do you beat Green Black Adventures? Let me know over there. And of course, anybody here in chat. Um. Cause yeah, I hate I hate like the one one death toucher. So like you know, like playing like these things is, is definitely worse. You'd rather have like the flyers. Um I guess you just you have to try to race with like with like the flyers with like borrower and sailor and stuff. And just with Nightpack, I think Nightpack Ambush are just sitting there and making three threes and just you know, you don't even need to attack with the three threes. Like you saw like how we kind of played it there. Um I think that's that's kind of the the game plan there oh yeah clover with all the the triggers yeah i could definitely see the the one drop that draws ca extra cards and clover both being problematic cards to deal with um so yeah i think i think you kind of have to be aggressive i think you have to be the aggressor there um so aggressive with flyers, brazen borrower. I know they have they have like their three mana five fives though and stuff too, so it's tough. So that's tough there. Okay. Anyway, Thunder Pie. Thanks for that support there, Thunder Pie. I appreciate that. Anyway, there we go. That's Simic Flash. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.